In this video we look at process architectures, von Neumann, Harvard and contemporary architectures. In the classic von Neumann architecture, the instructions and data share the same memory space and are served by one set of buses, collectively known as the system bus. The instructions and data are stored in the same format. That means you can't really tell the difference between an instruction and data when you look in its binary format. A single control unit or processor follows a linear fetch decode execute cycle, one instruction at a time, and registers are used as a fast access to instructions and data because it is quicker to handle data in the CPU than it is working with it directly in memory. However, this is not the only way in which computers can work. In a Harvard architecture, the instructions and data are stored in separate memory units and served by their own buses. This means whilst data is read or written to the memory, the next instruction can be fetched. Harvard architecture tends to be used by RISC processors. There are a few variations on the Harvard architecture and also alternative architectures. One is parallel processing, where a processor carries out a single instruction on multiple data, SIMD, often used by graphics processors. Another is multiple instructions on multiple data, MIMD, using multiple cores. Yet another example is distributed computing, where each computer on a network takes on part of the problem. This can be done on a grand scale across the internet, and SETI at Home is a great example of this. It's worth noting that adding 100 processors does not make solving a problem 100 times quicker. Some problems lend themselves to parallel processing, such as adding the same value to multiple addresses, for example for lighting effects in games. Other problems are not parallelizable at all, such as computing a Fibonacci sequence. In practice, most problems are partially parallelizable.